Hello and welcome again to my session. Uh, hello, this is Prateek Gupta and welcome to the basics on this session on the basics of communication. Uh, firstly, I'd like to welcome you to an academy India's largest online learning platform, which gives you an array of sources, resources and content to choose from and uh, prepare accordingly. So again, I welcome you to an academy India's largest online learning platform. Uh, welcome to the session today and I hope you make the most of it and you find it useful. A little a brief introduction about the educator today. Hello, this is Prateek Gupta. I am a Bachelor of Commerce from Christ College, Bangalore University. I am an associate member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. I am an associate member of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India and an associate member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India. Along with this, I'm also a law graduate from Karnataka State Law University and currently a practicing chartered accountant with uh, also being an educator for CA students, both offline and online. Uh, prior to starting my own practice, I worked with uh, SR Bartley Boy & Associates, that is the Indian member firm of Ernst & Young Global. I worked in the audit and assurance department and then I worked with Ernst & Young India in the mergers and acquisitions department. Post that, I worked with the Manipal Group, Bangalore, uh, as a corporate controller of the Indian and the German entity. And post that, I started my own practice, so it's been a while. I welcome you to my session today. Uh, when you subscribe to the Unacademy platform, what do you get? First and foremost, you get daily live classes where you get to choose the topic and you get to choose your educator. You get to choose your educator. So of your choice, who you find interesting and would like to listen to and not only listen to him, but while doing so, if you have any discussions or if you have any doubts, you can also ask him that during the live sessions and do not need to wait for anything or anyone. But your doubts are clear then and there. <clears throat> Hi, Priyanka. Thanks for joining my session. Welcome to my session. All right. Next, you get live quizzes and um, uh, tests, which helps you help you evaluate your level of preparation to know your weak points, to know your strong points and uh, uh, improve on your weak areas to identify your strong areas so that you do not spend much time on them and spend more times on your weak area. Uh, hello, Ritija. Welcome to the session. Uh, next, you get the, the courses provided on the Academy platform are structured, are structured in a way that they help you through your journey of step by step preparation of the entire uh, course, whatever you have selected, and it ensures that you've not missed on any important point. Hello, Prashant. Thank, welcome to my session. Thanks for joining in. And um, lastly, but uh, most importantly, it gives you unlimited access to the world of the various resources, courses and content that our academy has to provide you. So and, and the best part is you can access it at any point of the day you want without any limitations or restrictions. So I hope you make the most of this opportunity and take advantage of the uh, of, uh, the subscriptions. So for the people who have not yet downloaded the Unacademy app, I request you to download the Unacademy app and uh, install it on your on your uh, mobile phones. It is very easy to register as it just requires a mobile number and an OTP is sent to your mobile number through which you can register yourself on the uh, Unacademy learning app, which opens your gateway to the various courses, resources, and contents that an academy has to offer to you. So, and for the people who have already done it, thank you so much. I expect your continued support. Now, an academy plus platform provides various packages for the courses that you choose. Uh, I am part of the CA Foundation and Intermediate course, and the packages provided by an academy are as follows. An academy provides packages for one month, three months, six months, 12 months, and 24 months. The rates of the packages are displayed on your screen. I request you all to go through it carefully. And uh, once you have made the choice of the package that you want, do not forget to use the code Pratik, P-R-A-T-H-I-K, to get a discount of 5% or sorry, a 10% on your subscription price. P-R-A-T-H-I-K. Hi, Prashant. Hi, Prisha. Hi, Aikansh. Welcome to the session. Thanks so much for joining in. And I hope to see you all around. So the topic that we are going to discuss today, hi, hi, Prisha. The topic that we're going to discuss today is the basics of communication. This is also part of the CA Foundation syllabus. And besides the syllabus, I think I personally would like to connect with this topic because I think uh, communication is very effective or it's very 
uh, necessary in today's world where at any given point of time you are either expressing yourself or you're talking about something or you're asking something and uh, the mediums that have opened to people to communicate it becomes very important to communicate accordingly in the right channel or in the right mode now um, for example i mean maybe 10 years or 12 years ago who would have thought that we could be having a class like this where i would be sitting miles away from where you are sitting and you just log in uh, enter some buttons and enter some details and otps and you here you can see your tutor live i mean i i didn't imagine it 10 to 12 years ago that anything like this would happen but with the advancement of technology uh, all these events and all these opportunities were possible hello ajit kumar how are you okay so um, that is root communication and like i told you communication i mean let's leave the, the 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 ca foundation and intermediate course aside for a moment but i personally relate to this topic because i believe com com uh, good communication is important in every aspect and sphere of life if a person is unable to express himself clearly to the other person i mean what could be more uh, unfortunate than that when you have something in your mind when you have something in your heart but you are not able to communicate it to the other person then i think that is a very bad situation and something needs to be done about that because communication is the essence to anything today i am fine ajit kumar thanks for asking how are you doing all right okay so so today what we're going to talk about is the basics of communication it's not going to be an entirely textbook theoretical session but i will be sharing a lot of um, events or situations that i have come across i mean i will just share them with you because this is one topic which i relate to personally and i feel communication both verbal communication and written communication is very important even in your ca course because you are going to communicate right right from studying you are communicating you are you are taking information from the book you are listening to me i am communicating with you right now so if my communication is not good or if i am not able to communicate the ideas to you properly then how will it reach you the end objective is failed so care needs to be taken that communication is effective and if it is not effective the whole idea for the whole exercise uh, fails all right now, now firstly you now you are going to read textbooks you are going to uh, attend sessions on an academy attend other sessions and you are going to attend so that's the communication that is happening that's an inward communication that is happening then after you have prepared for your exam what is the next step that next step of communication that happens the next level of communication that happens is outward communication when you go and actually write your exams if you know the answer in your head but you are unable to put it on paper will it serve the purpose can you tell the can you tell the invigilator or the institute that no sir the answer was in my mind but uh, unfortunately i wasn't able to put it on paper will anyone believe you maybe maybe you, what you're saying is true maybe it's the truth what you're saying but how will you prove it how will you substantiate or justify it so here again comes the need for communication and please remember we communicate right from the time we get up in the morning to the time we sleep in the morning the minute you get up in the morning or maybe many of us as kids um, had that habit where we uh, we say ma get me my get me my milk or get me my tea or uh, ma what's the time or if your mother comes to wake you up you say no ma let me sleep for some more time that is communication now what has happened now does your mom come and actually tell you beta get up no maybe maybe you know uh, at least my mom she used to come and shake me up pretty vigorously that get up you know so even the shaking up or even the shaking is is something it is a form of communication uh ajit has sent a message sir why can't why i can't speak english like you what can i what i can do uh well i don't think so ajit i'm sure you can speak good english it's just a matter of practice and confidence you need to you need to practice it you need to speak speak english more often and you need to be confident about what you say surround yourself with people who can who can speak better than you and then you will automatically improve your language as well that is what i feel and i pretty much even without meeting you right now i am very sure that your english is good it's not bad all right but just surround yourself with people who speak better english than you 
then your English will automatically improve. And try and speak more English. Because see, it comes, it all comes with practice. The more you can practice, the more you uh, get confident. Yes, Prisha says watch English shows. Uh, yes, that's an, that's a that's another way. But uh, but please remember when when you watch those English shows, do not pick up the accent. Keep your accent as Indian as possible. Do not pick up the accent, but pick up the English. In case you want to improve even further, please watch English news channels. And uh, not the channels in which one person is screaming and the other persons are not are not able to answer. A normal news channel where news is given to you. There is no debate or argument going on in that channel. Watch that channel. All right. And like I said, surround yourself with people who speak better English than you. So then it will. So I hope Ajit Kumar, you will do that. And uh, maybe then maybe very soon I will see you uh, with different opinions. All right. Hello, Muhammad Mustafa Khan. Thanks for joining in. Welcome to my session. So like I said, when you get up in the morning, you start communicating, you know. Now, what is the first type of communication when your alarm rings? So what do you do? You, you stretch your hand out and you put the snooze button or you switch it off. That is a form of communication as well. That is physical communication as well. You are actually shutting off the alarm. So you're communicating there. So please remember, communication is required at every step of your life from the time you get up to the time you sleep or from the time you're born to the time you you breathe your last now how does a child who is just born communicate now he does not the child does not know english he or she does not know english does not know your local language it does not know to speak how does it communicate well at that point the child has only two modes of communication he either cries or he smiles if he smiles maybe everything is okay but if he cries then it means something is wrong and then the parent starts asking oh are you are, is it paining or they start checking whether the kid has dirtied uh, dirtied himself or there are rashes or whether something is hurting the child so that is the form of communication that the child does so please remember you might not understand what the child is trying to tell you but he's trying to communicate with you in your with your um, Yes, Mustafa, it is a class of business correspondence and reporting and communication. So now what are we talking about is the first chapter of communication as to what is the basics of communication. We will come to uh, the class of business correspondence and reporting in a future session. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of effective communication. So if you do not get that right, your business correspondence and reporting might not be as effective as you want it to be. OK, so that's the way communication starts. So please remember communication is required at all points of life. Hi, Suyash. Thanks for joining in. Welcome to my session. All right. What is communication? Communication is the process of exchanging information, ideas, thoughts, feelings, and emotions through speech, signals, writing, or behavior. In communication process, a sender, that is encoder, encodes a message and then using a medium or channel sends it to the receiver, the decoder, who decodes the message and after processing information sends back appropriate feedback reply using a medium or channel now let's take for us let's take all of us for example now who is the encoder here who's sending the messages initially i am sending the message so i am the encoder what is the medium i'm sending it through i am sending it through the unacademy platform right now so encoder is me the sender of information is me the medium is unacademy and the receiver is you all of you who are listening to my session today so once you receive the message you decode it so when when you decode a message it is very important that you decode it in the same language in which i meant uh, hi abhishek hi yashwant thanks for joining in welcome to my session okay and uh, the 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 people who have joined in i request you to to stay on till the end of the session because it will be useful to you i'm sure okay and uh, so that is the thing. And after you guys have understood the message, all of you have decoded the message. You give me a feedback saying, yes, sir, I have understood. Some of you give me a thumbs up and some of you ask me a question. Sir, I did not understand this point. So please let me know. There we go. Abhishek just gave a thumbs up. So that is a kind of feedback that my communication of welcome Abhishek to the session. Thanks for joining has reached him and he has understood it properly and he has given us a feedback. There we go. Ajit Kumar also has given us a feedback. OK, so there with the feedback, your communication is complete. That means the person to whom you sent your feedback 
has received it successfully in the same sense in which you sent it and he has given you a feedback all right are we clear so far ji mustafa ji aaj first class hai bcr ki isliye hum basics of communication discuss karenge fir dheere dheere aage aur complex matters discuss karenge theek hai sir can we to i hope i hope mr mohammad mustafa is okay with that sir i hope you find it useful thank you thanks for the feedback mustafa all right now the main steps inherent to all communication are i request you to listen carefully now the purpose or reason for the communication now please remember in our daily lives on and off on and off we listen to a lot of noise we listen to a lot of people talking we listen to our neighbors screaming we listen to some people on the road screaming we listen to um, uh, someone on the road trying to sell his products and things like that all that is noise see there should be a reason for communication if that person selling something is of interest to you let's say someone is uh, selling vegetables and you actually want to buy the vegetables in that case that communication will reach your ears you will process it thank you ajit i appreciate your feedback i appreciate your comment yes i do you know because i think everything is beyond an examination or beyond a course i think you need to effectively communicate in life and if you can do that half your problems are solved half the problems today are because of people can who cannot communicate once you can effectively communicate half your problems are solved all right so now when when you get up in the morning when you're in a daily life you hear a lot of noise you hear things on the television you hear things on the street you hear uh, people in the house talking to each other people talking over the phone uh, hi kumar abhishek thanks for joining in welcome to my session all right we hear a lot of noise so all that is noise there is no purpose or reason for that communication to you maybe the people who are talking on the phone or the vendor who is selling vegetables on the road he is doing it for a purpose but is it making a difference to you at that point do you know what the people are talking on the phone or do you know what the vendor is uh, selling on the road you don't right and you don't care unless and until you want to go and buy vegetables and he is selling vegetables in that case you will pay interest to what he is saying correct so the, there should be a purpose or reason for the communication so right now when i'm taking this session for you on the basics of communication what do you think is the purpose the purpose is to share whatever knowledge i have of communicating with you so that you can communicate better and once you can communicate better i would be happy okay so that is my whole purpose or reason for communication and here the communication is two way when i explain something you need to understand if you do not understand you ask me again and if you do understand you give me a thumbs up and you say yes sir we have understood it all right then the next point is the contents of the message the content of the message really needs to be important as to what exactly i need to convey to the concerned person if today i told you that this is a class on the basics of communication and i started with income tax act 1961 mm, would it make sense to you or would you just quietly sit down and listen to what i'm saying i don't think so right you would suddenly tell me that uh, like how mr mustafa asked me sir is this business con correspondence reporting and you would all also ask me that uh, i thought the session was on uh, uh, be, uh, communication how come you are talking to me about income tax act 1961 right so the the contents of the message also have to be relevant and what was discussed and agreed upon or if today i suddenly uh, come here and i start talking to you about uh, llb class or i start talking you about talking you about engineering or i start talking to you about medicals that is not the right mustafa i i can tell you that i will i will share that by the end of the class as to what is the timings uh, the contents i request you to stay for some more time the medium used for conveying the message for example internet written text speech pictures gestures and so on now what is the medium we are currently using we are currently using the an academy platform for the purpose of our communication and that is what we need to be sure about what is the medium the medium could also be internet it could be internet chats it could be emails it could be uh, talking on the phone it could be pictures gestures and so on when pictures are are uh, used for communication i think the latest app that uses pictures for communication is instagram where where there are only pictures right 
So that is also a form of communication, transmitting the message, transmitting the, the message. If it is in my head, if it is in my heart, if it's in my mind, it is not meant to be there. It is meant to come to you. So I need to transmit the message and to transmit the message. I need to speak. Either I need to speak to you or I need to write a letter to you or I need to write an email to you or I need to show a picture to you. In that case, I'm transmitting the message to you. Are you clear? Any everyone? Any questions? OK, messages are often misinterpreted due to external disturbances such as noise created and uh, uh, this thing now just imagine if the internet connection at my end was not very clear if 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 the internet connection was not good and there was a lot of disturbance here would you be receiving all what i'm saying on a real time basis and a continuous basis no my voice would be breaking my my video would be breaking and obviously you will tell me that sir you're not clear we can't hear you we can't see you clearly so in such a case what would what has to be done I need to get rid of that external disturbance. When you are talking to a friend on the phone, if the network is not clear, what do you say? Hello, I can't hear you. Your voice is breaking. Please go to a network area. Or if there are a lot of people talking behind you and you're talking on the phone, what do you do? You actually go to a place which is quiet and where there is no noise. So in that case, you are eliminating the external disturbance because because of the external disturbance. The communication is not clear. Now, I, I will uh, I can give you a prime example, a true life example with what happened to me. Now, this was many years ago, a friend of mine. There was a lot of noise. I was in office at that point and there was a lot of noise uh, behind me. And the person uh, called up, my friend called me up and said, uh, uh, my relative was fired from the job. My relatives were fired. So I, I very calmly said, OK, your relative is fired. That's OK, no problem. He will get another job. But then she said, no, not fire. He expired. So at that point, I really did not know how to react. Now, what had happened at that point? When the first time she told when, when the first time uh, my friend told me that uh, my relative expired, I heard it as my relative was ex has, ex has been fired. When, it's only when I came to a quieter place and I asked my friend what exactly. At that time, my friend said, my relative expired. So can you can you see the difference? Just imagine if I was in a hurry and I just heard that my relative is fired and I kept the phone on. What would I think? I would be like, OK, no problem. That person can get another job. But the minute I heard that the relative had expired, then that was a cause of concern. That was something to worry about. So this is why this is how communication, the medium of communication needs to be clear. And uh, uh, there should be no external disturbance when this happens. So if that is established, your communication will always be effective. Am I clear? OK, uh, receiving the message. Now, you, you should be receiving the message. Uh, and uh, once you receive the message, I always ask you, can you hear me? Can you see me clearly? So the minute you hear this message or you, the minute you hear me say this, obviously, all of you say, yes, sir, we can hear you and see you clearly. Uh, there are cases where a few of you could not see me or hear me clearly. And then I told you, no, the others can hear me clearly. So I think there is some problem with your system. So then there the medium of, of uh, communication had a problem, had a fault, which had to be rectified. Deciphering and making sense of the message. Now, once I pass on a message to you, it is your job or it is your responsibility to decipher. Decipher means uh, get into the details or cut into the details and, and see if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, obviously, you as students right now have the whole right to come back and ask me, sir, we did not understand what you just said. Please explain it again. Interpreting and figuring out what the receiver thinks in his real messages. So again, when right now when I'm talking to you, I'm also sharing my life experiences and I'm also talking to you about effective communication. So it is I'm, I'm, I'm doing both the things at once. So it is very important for you to also understand the context in which I am saying it. All right, let's move on. This is the process of communication. I request you to have a look at this diagram uh, for about 30 seconds and then we discuss further. Any questions, please ask me.
Okay. Now, what are the types of communications? Now, what? Okay. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd request you to answer this. What are the different types of communications that you come across in your daily life? What are the different types of communications you come across? Come on, give it a shot. Yes, Prisha, verbal, non-verbal. Okay, what are the what are the uh, means of non-verbal communication? Can you tell me? Pictures, yes. Some more. Traffic signals. Yes, that is also a means of non-verbal communication. Very good. Anyone else? Some more? Okay. A good understanding of the different types of styles of communication can enhance your personal and professional relationship, resolve any misunderstandings and misconceptions, and contribute to a successful business venture. Yes, Ajit, WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp is also non-verbal. Yes. But when you send voice messages, that becomes verbal communication. Good. Okay. So every person has, has his or her personal lifestyle of interacting with others. In the process of communication, an individual uses an individual uses uh, manifold channels to convey the message. However, the effectiveness of communication style depends upon whether the receiver has accurately interpreted and intended the idea, thought, feelings, etc. Sometimes the speaker reveals more than he she wishes to convey through the gestures, etc. etc. Therefore, it is important to understand the different modes of communication. Now, let me let me add to what uh, Ajit just said. WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp is an effective mode of communication. It's a non-verbal mode of communication where you're typing things and you're sending across. But please remember, uh, like we read in this paragraph, if your medium of sending messages is not clear or it is not the right one, in that case, the, the, the wrong message might, might go to the uh, receiver. I don't know how many of you have uh, come across this, but I, I have faced. Hi, Priyanka. Thanks for joining my session. Welcome. I have come across many instances where I was chatting with someone on WhatsApp and uh, the other person got offended or I got offended with certain messages what the other person said. And uh, uh, for example, suddenly you're chatting and uh, your friend from there types, uh, okay, I'm busy, I got to go. Okay, and just goes offline. Now, what do you think in such a situation? Now, obviously, this is the way I used to behave that suddenly I... I actually check and see whether I have sent any offensive messages, whether I have sent anything wrong, whether I have said something bad that the person felt bad and uh, things like that. It's maybe after a day or two when I call the friend and ask, I mean, why did you just go suddenly? Did you feel bad about something I said? And then that person says, no, I had to go. My mother was calling me. So I, I said, OK, bye. I got to go and I put the phone down. So so that's the way your means or the channel you, you used for communication can also affect the effectiveness of how a receiver receives it. All right. So you need to always make sure that you choose the right channel. The channel should be appropriate and the right one in order to communicate. Any questions? Please ask me. If not, please take a minute and read the slide and then we will proceed. Please go through the slide and we will proceed. Any questions, please ask me. Uh, for the people currently attending my session, I request all of you to go to my profile on an academy and uh, click the follow button so that you get real time updates on when I am uh, taking the session and when I plan to take the session. So I request you to go to the 
uh, an academy app and press the follow button on my profile for the people who've done it thank you very much okay the broad categories of communication are as under uh, based on communication channels we have verbal non-verbal and visual based on the purpose and style we have formal and informal okay now before we start reading the slides and before we go into it let's quickly discuss what do we mean by verbal non-verbal and visual verbal verbal communication like like we understand from it is through speaking and right now i am doing verbal communication i am talking to you but what you are responding to me is non-verbal communication because you're not speaking to me you are typing it there and you're sending me the messages so this is the meaning of verbal communication and non-verbal communication now non-verbal communication can take they can take a lot of forms non-verbal communication can be through gestures it can be through texts it can be through pictures it can be through your face your body language it can be through your face it can be through a lot of things you know so so non-verbal communication are consists of a lot of things which we will discuss further but verbal communication is normally when a person speaks to the other person and unless and until the person can speak clearly what is in his mind what is in his heart verbal communication will fail uh, have you come across a situation where uh, people who cannot speak very fluently or cannot express themselves through verbal communication very fluently actually write very well they are able to express their feelings through writing so it normally happens a person who cannot communicate properly verbally will be able to put his feelings and expressions on paper very well so this is this is nature it just happens so at least this is what i have observed in a lot of cases in case you have observed something like that please do share with me uh, hi vinay kumar thanks for joining in welcome to my session hi mohammad ali welcome to my session thanks for joining in and then we have visual communication visual communication again is through pictures portraits and uh, like like i think prisha said traffic signal traffic signal is also a mode of visual communication where we see a red light and we understand we need to stop. We see a green light and we understand we need to go. And we see an orange light and uh, ideally we are supposed to slow down. But uh, when we see an orange light, we tend to increase our speed so that we do not get caught on the red light. I mean, that's just said on the lighter note. Uh, the, green, the green signal you need to uh, go, the red one is meant to stop and the orange one is meant to slow down and then stop. Okay, so I hope everyone follows the traffic signals. And based on the purpose and style, we have formal and informal. Now, please remember, now, can anyone tell me what is the communication that we are having right now or what I am having with you right now? Which, which uh, bracket does it fall under, formal or informal? What is the communication that we are having right now? <clears throat> it is a formal mode of communication, right? I am trying to teach you something i'm trying to explain something to you and you are taking it you are receiving it right now you are absorbing it so it is a formal kind of communication that is happening right now we did not study in the same class we did not study in the same college uh, we are not childhood friends unfortunately i would, you know i would love to be friends with each of you but unfortunately we are not childhood friends we are not uh, uh, known, known each other for 10 12 years in case we did that then we have a scope to, to communicate informally, but right now on the platform we are, and the purpose for which we have met right now is a very informal or it's a very formal purpose. So we need to keep it that way where I am giving the instructions, I am giving the lecture and you are receiving it. And in case you have any doubts, it becomes my duty and responsibility to answer it. Is that clear? So right now what we're having is a formal communication. At the same time, within the group of or whatever you, all of you uh, chat among yourselves. That is an informal communication. For example, Mama Dali speaks to Vinay Kumar. Or Vinay Kumar messages Mama Dali. Or Priyanka messages Prisha. Prisha messages Priyanka that, hi, what, how's the class going on and this thing. That becomes an informal communication because at the moment, all of you are students. All of you are students and I'm the educator here. So ideally, you cannot have an informal communication with me right now. You need to have a formal communication with me. Uh, hi, Shadab. Thanks for joining in. Welcome to my session. Hi, Tashu Gupta. Thanks for joining in. Welcome to my session. Am I clear so far? Yes.
हाँ अजीत आपका क्वेश्चन क्या है सर आप इंटर की भी क्लासेस लेते हैं क्या जी हाँ मैं सर मैं इंटर की भी क्लासेस लेता हूं बताइए आपको किस सब्जेक्ट में हेल्प चाहिए For the people who've just joined in, I repeat again, request you to please go to the Un Academy app and follow my profile so that you get real-time updates about when my session is about to start and what is the topic about. I request the people who've just joined in to go and press the follow button on the Un Academy app on my profile. Now, let's read through uh, verbal communication. Verbal communication involves the use of words and language in delivering the intended message. Through verbal primary refers to communication through spoken medium while categorizing types of uh, verbal uh, communication the written and oral form of communication are included written communication includes letters and documents emails reports handbooks brochures various chat platforms sms and any other form of written interaction between people uh, the written form of communication is essential and indispensable for formal business interactions, contracts, memos, press release, formal business proposals, etc., and legal instructions and documentation. The effectiveness of written communication depends on the writing style, grammar, vocabulary, and, and uh, um, clarity. Okay, so now we talk about verbal communication. Like that, like the slide says, verbal communication mainly involves through the spoken medium, but a lot of people also term as written written. Uh, Communication also comes into the verbal category where you're using words. So that comes under verbal. So please remember the slide is trying to make a point here that uh, written communication becomes very important, especially if you are in a formal or a corporate environment. Let's say you're working in a company and uh, you want to apply for leave. Now you cannot just call up your boss and say, hey, I'm not coming tomorrow. Please get someone else. For, for, our, for most purposes, your boss will say, you stay at home, I will hire someone else. Okay, so at that point, you can't do that. So you need to send him a formal communication through mail that you write an email to him or even if you're sending him a text message on the mobile, it has to be a formal one because he's your boss. So you have to say, dear sir, madam, uh, due to so-and-so, so-and-so reason, I will not be able to come to office tomorrow and I request you to grant me leave. So that will be your way of putting it across. You just can't pick up the phone and say i'm not coming yes ajit you know that was meant to be a joke all right so so you need to see the environment in which you're working and then you need to choose your mode of communication same time if you if you were going to a party with your friends and uh, you were supposed to meet them at nine o'clock at that point you do not need to send a text message to your friend saying dear dear mahesh uh, i i hope you are good i trust you are well but uh, due to this, this, this reason, I will not be able to attend the party. So I request you to excuse me today and I will come and talk to you tomorrow. You can't do that. In that case, what do you do? You just pick up the phone. You tell your friend, buddy, I can't come today. I've got a headache or I've got some work. I will see you tomorrow. I will call you tomorrow. That's all you say, right? So please remember, depending on the situation, depending on uh, what you're doing and whom you're talking to, your mode of communication has to change. In an informal environment, you can or cannot use a, a, a formal method, but in a formal environment, you have to use a formal, a formal mode of communication. The same thing if you send your friend a long message saying, Dear Mahesh, due to so and so reason, I can't come. For all you know, just like how Ekanj is laughing right now, your friend might also laugh at you and make fun of you for the rest of your life. But that's okay. That's, that's not a risk. But just imagine if you call your boss and say, hey, buddy, I'm not coming tomorrow. I'm busy. He'll say you stay at home. Don't come to work. Getting my point. Any questions, Ajit? Any question, Ekanj? Please take 30 seconds and read the slide. Let me know once you're done.
Okay, oral communication. Like I said, oral communication is when you speak. Like how I am speaking to you right now, that is oral communication, and how you are speaking to me right now is verbal is is written communication because you're writing to me and I'm speaking to you. Even though you're writing to me, I can read your messages here and then I'm replying to you orally. So that is oral communication as well. Now there will be a lot of barriers in oral communication as well. In case I do not know how to speak English properly, then in that case, how will I communicate with you? If I do not have words or if I cannot form a straight sentence, then how do I communicate with you? Then it becomes a problem. Then it is a barrier to communication. So. It's very important that the person who's doing oral communication is very clear with the language he's using. And the other person should also know that language. If today I came and spoke to you in any other language, or uh, maybe if I will ask you a question, if you reply to me in any other language, I may not understand it. So the whole purpose of uh, communication is defeated. Is it clear? So your oral communi communication needs to be clear. It needs to be on clear speech. Now let's read it. Oral communication refers to the communication through the spoken word, either face to face, telephonically, via voice, chat, telephone conferencing, or any other medium. Formal medium like lectures, conferences, seminars, meetings, and informal conversations, chit chat, gossip, are part of oral communications. Effective oral communication depends upon clear speech and the tone used by the speaker. Speaking is too high, speaking in too high volume, low volume, or too fast or slow can also impair communication between people. Some non-verbal communication such as body language and visual cues affect the quality of interaction among the individuals. Now see, what does this mean? Even when you are having an oral communication, the language might be good and everything might be okay. I might, I might, I might be, I might know good English. I might, my English might be okay so that I can take class. But please remember, if I'm talking too loudly, you will not understand. If I'm talking too softly, only I will hear it. Obviously, you will not understand it. Or if I'm uh talking too fast you might not understand or if you are talking too slow you might not understand and also please remember when there is oral communication your body language also plays a part just imagine if uh, uh one of you asks me a doubt and uh i'll be like okay i will answer it later i mean this is a negative body language it means i do not care about your question it means I'm, I'm not concerned. There is a one way communication that is going on and I'm not open to interaction. But at the same time, when you ask me a question, if I'm like, yes, yes, Ajit, how can I help you? What's your question? In that case, the, the whole purpose that I have come forward, my body is leaning forward, means that I'm interested in the question and I'm interested to help Ajit. All right. So your body language also makes a difference when you are doing oral communication. And that's why your hands need to keep moving to for effective oral communication because then the viewer will also get bored if he just sees a face talking so your hands and uh, mm, okay ajit let's not let's not discuss that but i mean maybe that's that, that's those teachers way of communication but that's not the right way of communication trust me okay verbal communication is the easiest and fastest and the most successful form of communication Yet surprisingly, surprisingly, according to speech research, it comprises of only 7% of all human communications. Please remember, verbal communication, talking to you, is the easiest form of communication. And you asking me your doubts right now is the fastest way of communication. Just imagine if today the class got over, then I told you that all of you please summarize your queries and uh, questions and mail it to me tomorrow. I will look into it tomorrow and I will reply to it day after tomorrow. What happens? For your simple questions, how many days have gone? I've lost two days. I've made you wait two days for your queries. But right now, if you have any questions, you ask me and I answer it then and there because this is verbal communication. I'm speaking to you and I'm clearing your doubts then and there. Is the concept clear? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication is the process of communicating by sending and receiving wordless messages. These messages can, can aid verbal communication, convey thoughts and feelings contrary to the spoken words or express ideas and emotions on their own. Now, what are the physical non-verbal communication? An individual's body language, that is facial expressions, stance, gestures, tone of voice, touch, and other physical signals constitute a kind of communication. Now. If I am, if I could probably see you, 
all right if i could see all of you right now which i can't and and if if some of you are sitting on your study table and listening to me through your laptop or through your mobile whereas some of you might actually be on the dining table eating something and listening to me or some of you might actually be lying down on the bed and listening to me and just kept the mobile aside that someone is speaking you know let him speak so all these events or your body language reflects a lot about your mindset and what are you actually thinking if today i if today just for example if i just sit like this okay i today the class is on communication i'm sure you guys will not even stay in the class for 2 minutes in 2 minutes you will say oh this is a boring guy who's talking let's just walk out of the class so if i'm sitting like this it means either i am not interested in teaching you or maybe i've done too much of work and i'm too too tired from the morning either ways no one will attend my sessions are you getting my point how your body language also reflects on your communication para language the way you say something more than the actual words used reveal the intent of the message the voice quality intonation pitch stress emotion tone and style of speaking communicates approval interest or the lack of it now now see please remember there is communication in everything you do if you if you move your hand there is communication if if i if i if i do this there is communication if if you take off your glasses and you rub your eyes there is communication communication is everywhere maybe you just don't pick it up okay now now this paragraph says para language let's say i ask you is there uh, do any of you have any questions do any of you have any doubts and uh, what are the choices you have you can say no sir no sir hello narendra modi thanks for joining my session welcome to my session you can say no sir i don't have a question or you can say no or you cannot reply now when you say no sir i'm like okay you don't have a you don't have a question good evening good evening narendra modi ji kaise hain aap i am good okay now when you say no no sir that means okay everything is okay but you don't have a question but when you say no even then it's okay you know i might think okay maybe you're too busy doing something else so you don't have time to type no sir so you just said no or for the people who don't even reply when i ask them that um, do you have any doubts thank you narendra ji thank you so much for attending that class i hope you're liking it okay so for the people who don't even reply to my question when i ask them do you have any doubts now what am i supposed to think are they in front of their systems are they even listening to me or are they finding it or they finding it too difficult to even say no or are they too busy doing something else so see that is also a form of communication your body language your response to events all right so communication is there everywhere next is aesthetic communication now what is aesthetic communication art forms such as dancing painting sculpture music are also means of communication they convey the ideas of the artist now let's say i don't know if you have encountered artists or dancers or this thing but if there is anyone who's who's a trained dancer and let's say they are very upset a particular day that day they dance normally they dance to express themselves or the same day or the next day if they are very happy about something then also they will dance to express themselves so this is a way of aesthetic communication where they are expressing themselves through a, a dance platform similarly for a painter if if he is depressed or he is sad maybe a painter lost his friend so he might just go and start painting he might make a painting uh, in which there someone is crying or a sad painting so that means aesthetic communication so if anyone looks at that painting at that point he knows that the person who's made this painting is sad all right similar for a sculptor a sculptor is a person who makes a statue who sculpts statues so if it depends on the mood of the sculptor if the, if the sculptor is unhappy then he makes that kind of a statue or if he is happy he makes another kind of statue is that clear next is appearance appearance is usually the first thing noticed about a person a well dressed and groomed person is presumed to be organized and methodical whereas a sloppy or shabby person fails to make an impression a favorable impression so dress up according to the situation and event now let's say i am taking class for you right now i am taking the session for you right now and uh, this is of course i am taking it for the ca foundation course right and that's a that's a serious thing that's a formal formal event or formal occasion now just say i was maybe wearing a t-shirt with a beach thing and wearing a cap and wearing sunglasses and uh, taking class for you 
I mean, first, what would be your first impression? This is a mad guy. He does not know what he's doing and there's no point in attending a session because it doesn't look like he knows anything. Even though after wearing that t-shirt and the cap and sunglasses, I might be saying the same things that I'm saying right now. But poems will be a part of uh, verbal communication, Prisha. That's verbal communication because you're speaking it and you're writing it. Okay. So even though I might say the same things after I wear the sunglasses and the cap and the, the jazzy t-shirt, but what will be your first impression? This is a mad fellow. He does not know anything. So let's not attend his class. So please remember the message that I have conveyed to you is I do not know how to dress to the event. I took this whole session very casually. I have taken it very lightly and that's wrong on my part. So are you clear? Okay. Uh, symbols such as religious status or ego building simple symbols. Now, let's say if uh, someone asks me a question and I'm like, wait, wait, yeah, I will answer it. I mean, see my body language, see my symbol. I'm, you're asking me a question and I'm like, wait. So that's not the way it's to be done. I need to be open and you, you're most welcome to ask questions. All right. So this is also a form of communi communication, which is either gives you a negative uh, image or a positive image. Visual communication, visual communication through visual aids such as signs, traffic sign, typography, drawing, graphic design, illustration, color and other electronic resources usually reinforces written communication. Visual communication is a powerful medium. It is a reason that the print and audio visual media takes effective use of visuals to convey their message. Visuals like graphs, pie charts and other diagrammatic representations uh convey clearly and concisely a deal of information they are essential part of official presentation these days so this this slide simply means visual communications are are a form of communication that support written or verbal communication they complement that form of communication for example if i just told you today uh 10 percent of people in india do this 20 percent of people in india do that 30% of people in India do this. Maybe you will listen to me and you might you might remember it for maybe two minutes or three minutes. But what if I made a pie chart or a graph diagram and showed it to you and said that 10% of the people do this, 10% or uh, 20% in the green do this, 30% in the red do this, 40% in the, in the purple color do this, which will create a more lasting impression in your mind. Me just orally saying it or actually showing you a pie diagram. I think showing you a pie diagram will do much better than me orally saying it. Don't you agree? Yes. So that is the point that I was trying to make. That means visual communication. Please take 30 seconds and read this. Hi, Sumit. Thanks for joining in. Okay, now let's move to the other mode of communication that is formal and informal communication. Okay, like I said, formal communication is for formal instances or when you're speaking to people elder to you or you're talking to people senior to you or you're talking in a very uh, serious and a formal environment. Now, formal communication. Uh, formal communication, both oral and written, follows certain rules, principles and conventions in conveying the message. The hierarchy in the organization has to be followed. Format, style, and language have to be used. Now, like I said, if he, if someone is your friend, you can go and put your arm around his shoulder and talk to him however you want. No one stops you. If you actually go and talk to your friend in a formal way, either your friend might laugh at you. So please try it. All of you have best friends, I'm sure. Please go to your best friend and say, respected so-and-so. Today, uh, I wish to inform you that I did this, this in class. That person is going to tell you, just keep quiet and talk to me normally. You know, don't, don't, don't try to act smart. That is what that person is going to tell you. So you need to see what situation is and then talk. Vertical. Now see, formal communication can be vertical. What do you mean by vertical communication? When a junior person speaks to a senior person or a senior person speaks to a junior person. When an old person speaks to a young person or a young person speaks to an old person, the communication is up and down vertically. In that case, you require formal communication either ways. Okay. 
Now, what happens in the case where there is horizontal communication? Horizontal communication means sideways. Now, with sideways, people might be your same age or people might be your same position in a company. So in that, that case, you do not need to be very formal, but you need to see who they are. If they are the people in the same team in which you are working in, in that case, yes, you can be a little, little informal, but let's say the admin department of a company is talk, admin manager of a company is talking to the production manager of the company. Now, both the people are on the managerial level. They are horizontal communication, but they are not friends. So you need to have a formal communication between the two. Is that clear? Then there is diagonal communication where there is communication up and down and where the junior of the admin department is talking to the uh, boss or the senior guy in the production department. It's a diagonal communication. Even in that case, your communication needs to be formal because you do not know that person and he's a different department. He could get offended. Hi, Ketan. Thanks for joining my session. Welcome. Informal communication. Uh, cross uh, first we go to diagonal uh, cross functional communication between employees at different levels of the organization hierarchy is described as diagonal communication diagonal communication is increasingly common in larger organizations okay informal communication uh, informal communication is the casual friendly and unofficial it is spontaneous conversation and exchange of informal uh, exchange of information between two or more persons without conforming to the prescribed official rules, process, systems, formalities, and chain of demand. Informal communication is between family, friends, neighbors, members of the community, and other social relations that are based on common interests, tastes, and dispositions. OK, so now we'll, talk, we'll quickly talk about what informal communication is. And I think this will be the last topic for the day. The informal communication is, like I said, when you communicate between friends, family, uh, siblings, that is your brothers and sisters, or your friends, or people from the same community. So that because you know them too well, and they will not mind, you can afford to be a little casual about things. Hi, Shivam. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so you can you can be casual about things. So in that case, you can take the liberty of being a little informal. That hey, buddy, what's up? Hey, what are you doing, man? Come here. If you're free, let's go out. Let's go for a walk. You can you can talk that way. But then you need to see who it is. You know, there are, but when, when we say family, uh, there is even, even when someone talks to the mother or father, it doesn't mean that you can talk to them however you want just because they're family. Because there you get vertical uh, communication. They are older to you. There is a certain uh, rules that you need to follow. There is a certain respect you need to give them, even though they are your family. Okay, but at the same time, a lot of people speak to their mother and father also very casually as friends. But that again is the relationship that they all maintain and you need to take care of that and see what happens. Okay, is there any question? Any questions so far? This was the last topic for today. We will continue with another session. There are, there are still some things to go in this. Uh, Ajit, any question? Prisha, any question? Ritija, Ekansh, any question? No, Ajit, I, I, we can have this personal discussion offline or something, but not here. Any questions with anyone? I would be happy to answer any questions. If not, take about 30 seconds and read the slide and then ask me if you have any questions. Anyone, anything, please ask me. If there are no questions, then I would like to wind up this session. Uh, thank you so much. I repeat, the people who have not done it yet, I request you to go on to the Unacademy app and follow my profile to get real-time notifications about the classes and topics that I'm covering so that you can attend my classes. And uh, for the people who have attended my class, my session today, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you around. And I look forward to having you in my future sessions as well. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, 
Uh, see you soon sometime. Thank you.